McDonald's Monopoly game gave millions of people a chance to win. But from 1989 to 2001, there were almost no legitimate million dollar winners. The FBI told us the game pieces are being stolen. McDonald's was shocked. Conversations on the wiretap were coming in. I'm hearing the name Uncle Jerry thrown around on the phone. We started focusing more on trying to figure out who he was. McMillions was a popular docuseries on HBO a few years ago about the massive crime network that rigged the McDonald's Monopoly game for decades. Now the filmmakers are out with a new book sharing new information that didn't make it into the documentary. It's called McMillions, the absolutely true story of how an unlikely pair of FBI agents brought down the most supersized fraud in fast food history. James Lee Hernandez and Brian Lazarte join us now. Thanks for being with us, guys. Good morning. Hey, thanks for having us. God, yeah, I, thank you. I, I think I, I watched this documentary. It was so fascinating that this guy got away with this for so long. This Uncle Jerry that you refer to really was working for this, what was it, the security people in charge of promotions for McDonald's? For people who aren't familiar, just lay out the nuts and bolts. Correct. So he was working for a company called Simon Marketing, which, you know, McDonald's, uh, as Mark Devereaux in the documentary says, they make burgers, french fries, and milkshakes, but they don't make marketing. So they hire a company to do the entire Monopoly game for them. And uh, the head of security at this company was actually stealing the game pieces and selling them to uh, all these people that they recruited as part of this crime ring. It almost sounds like a mob comedy. Uh, James, uh, what was the first hint that something wasn't right? Um, as far as like when the FBI discovered it, yeah. like, in that sense, you know, it was uh, it was something that came in totally by a fluke. You know, uh, you have the this rookie FBI agent that, uh, you know, is is full of energy and Doug Matthews and he's ready to get out there and do all the things that you see on movies and TV shows. But uh, apparently the FBI looking into insurance fraud, which he was doing at the time, isn't that exciting. So <laughs> he saw this post-it note on his senior uh, agent's desk, and that was something that kicked off his curiosity. It just said, "Monopoly, McDonald's monopoly fraud, question mark. And that just drove him nuts, and he had to figure out what that was all about, which... Uh, it turned into this massive case that spanned the entire United States. And Brian, I love how they ended up catching a lot of the people that posed, you know, that won the million dollars. So they recruited people that they kind of knew through a third party, but they did one of those. We're getting all the winners back together. Come to the Hyatt and, you know, right? The idea that the FBI had, which wasn't the first idea, by the way, of doing this undercover operation, this was very much spawned by the rookie agent, Doug Matthews, which if you haven't seen the series, he is a, a very special uh, former FBI agent. And he w thought it would be a great idea to go undercover as a film production company <laughs> for a McDonald's commercial it's great. with that concept of let's bring all the winners together and we want to interview you and we'll put you on a big screen in, in a Vegas promotion yeah um, and that's how they they got all these people on tape is there some uh safeguard or guardrails that we've learned to protect uh from from these things happening in the future yeah you know they uh there are a ton of different things to stop this from happening and even the way that they had things set up at simon marketing and the printing company which was dittler brothers i mean this printing company also did Lotto tickets. I mean, they're they're basically printing money technically. Mm -hmm. So there are there already were a ton of guardrails in place. And when McDonald's did an audit of it, the one weak point that they found, obviously, eventually, was the uh, the main head of security. But yes, they're they already were very good at it. Now there are it's basically like impossible to try and crack this entire thing. We so, we hope unless that's going to be mm -hmm. season two. two <laughs> so, Brian, what will people find in the book that yeah, that didn't make it into the documentary? Well, there's a lot of great new details that are sprinkled throughout the entire book. Um, and specifically, there's if you remember the documentary series, there was multiple undercover operations that, that took place, interviews with different people. And uh, there's a whole additional one uh, that 
is incredibly hilarious uh, that we ne never were able to include in the series that we were very excited to bring in the book. Um, but I think that there's so much packed into this book. I, I mean, we'd be here for a long time uh, layering in all the specifics that we sprinkled in that that just never made the series. Real quickly, Uncle Jerry, the head of security, he went to jail. Who else went down for this stuff? Well, ultimately, 51 people were arrested. So it, it was it was this big, massive thing. As far as people who did jail time, it was uh, Uncle Jerry, it was uh, Robin Colombo, and it was A.J. Glum. And the two of them had priors, so that's why they actually did jail time. The rest of the people, they either got probation, they, they, they had to pay restitution. There were a lot of things that happened to them, but most of the people within this weren't like hardcore criminals. So this was their first real, you know, bout with the law. So a lot of them really got a slap on the wrist during, you know, with all of this happening. The, the sad thing is that was kind of a fun game. Yeah. So they had to go away because yeah. <laughs> they screwed it up for the rest of us, right? Well, we never had a chance to win any yeah. of the high value prizes. Yeah. So, you know, but I, I think that one of the great takeaways, not only with the series, but also, you know, how we bring it in the book is there are a lot of, a lot of good people that made bad decisions. Oh. And a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, it was just a victimless crime. And you start to see that there were a lot of victims and there were a lot of people who had consequences that, you know, affect their life even to this day. Well, the book is McMillions, the absolutely true story of how an unlikely pair of FBI agents brought down the most supersized fraud in fast food history. Nice short title, yeah. but you get the idea. There's how you can follow them both on social media. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much.